Hey guys, welcome back to another Architectural Real Talk. So after looking at how to design an efficient home, how to design an affordable home, we also talked about how do you go about a construction process, how do you even go about financing, getting a mortgage. A lot of the questions that I've been getting is, what type of a dwelling unit should I live in? Should I get a house? Should I get a townhouse? Should I get a condo? Should I get a... And each one of your cases varies based on the proximity that you want from the city, based on your family size. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the first thing I want you to understand is a house is a standalone unit. It is a, defined by a three hour fire separation between the units. And the most common way to achieve that is by having a three foot side yard or a five foot side yard, which gives you the maximum amount of privacy. You don't have any shared walls. You also have a backyard and a front yard you have the maximum amount of flexibility when it comes to any type of modification you want to do. There are HOAs associated with subdivisions, and those primarily serve for amenities that might be shared by the entire subdivision, right? You have a cost of ownership. Again, all the maintenance is being done by you, so it is the most expensive type of house. The closer it gets to the city, the more unaffordable it becomes. It becomes uberly expensive and the further you are in the suburbs or you're further out in towns or even rural areas the more practical they are for a larger family now one of the things that is a drawback for having a house is your inability to move very quickly you don't have the flexibility to just say i'm going to go ahead and wrap up my house and go to a different unit most of the time a house is sold between three months to about eight months depending on the market if you have a smaller home, it flips faster than a larger home because they're more affordable to a majority of the population. So that is one of the caveats for having a house. Now, a townhouse, on the other hand, also has an HOA fee. Also own the property that you're on. When it comes to single family homes, both of these classify as single family homes. You both, you own the land that it sits on, you own the actual dwelling unit itself. Now, when it comes to the HOA, this is a monthly HOA. It's specifically larger. You own less piece of land for those who don't like yard works. This is a more affordable option. Again, their price lowered because they most of the time have shared walls. Again, the fire rating now drops to two hours. And since you have a two hour fire rating, you can have two stud walls with a gap between them, most of the time filled by fire rated dense glass or it's probably mineral wool, wherever the transitions happen. And you pretty much have two standalone walls with an air gap between them that allows you to have your two hour fire rating. But that doesn't negate the fact that you can hear one unit or the other. And if you have a corner unit, you still have one wall that you share. Now, a lot of people dismiss townhouses just prim primarily off of the fact that there's a high HOA. But that high HOA translates to all your exterior is covered. Even if there's some amount of landscaping that happens in your yard or your backyard or something along that route, that's also covered. Now, when it comes to roof maintenance, window leaks, all of that is also covered. And some HOAs go as far as to cover trash and water. Now, this is based primarily on what type of a townhouse dwelling you're in. The older your townhouses are, the more likely this maintenance fee is high because your roof is older, your plumbing's older, and so on and so forth. And another thing you need to take into consideration at this point is home insurances. A single dwelling home that is standalone property by itself that has a three hour rating will definitely have a higher home insurance per year than a townhouse that is amongst the shared property. It's kind of like having rental insurance at that point, right? But both of them have about the same level of security. If you were to compare contrast between the two, if you were to go closer and closer to the city, it is more practical for you to go to a townhouse because of its affordability. It's um, because you're now transporting less. So there's savings involved when you are moving closer to the city and you down the size to a townhouse, which would be still an upgrade compared to going with a single family house that are out there in the rural country. So those are the things that you have to take into consideration, flexibility and location. When it comes to flexibility, it sells about the same 
amount of time, but townhouse tend to sell a little bit faster. You're looking at probably around two to six months before the townhouse gets flipped. Majority of the time, when it comes to overall size, you have a smaller amount of space per floor, so they stack up vertically. It is typical for townhouses to have three to four stories versus a house that goes up to two stories, and that's usually due to HOA restrictions. You usually also have smaller family sizes live in townhouses. That is just per census. So those are the differences between the two. Now, the third option is condo. Now, condominiums have a one-hour fire rating separation. Majority of the time, you have ownership of the unit. You no longer own land. So you're owning the flat. You're pretty much own structure to structure. So if the dwelling is made out of concrete, for this example, it is from the concrete wall to the concrete wall on the inside. You can't puncture and make windows, but you have full flexibility and ownership of adding different lighting fixtures. You will eventually own that unit over time. The HOA significantly increases because as you have a vertical stacked building, mid-rise or even a high-rise, you have higher maintenance costs when it comes to elevators and so on and so forth. So HOAs do go up. Um, your security, by the way, also increases drastically because you're no longer a standalone unit. You also become less flood prone. You end up being on a higher unit. So all of those are advantages of a condo. Now. Overall cost of a condo versus townhouse, they are close to almost equal because at the end of the day, the condos end up being in the most densely packed areas of the urban city. If you are enjoying walkability, if, you're en if you enjoy having the bar right next door, then condos are a practical choice. If you are young and you have that lifestyle where you're not looking into having a large family, then that is the most practical choice. Now, with that said, it is still has issues when it comes to flexibility. You are still internally maintaining a condo. And again, HOA fees for both townhouses and condos can go up based on the whim of the landlord, right? So that's one of the reasons that people go towards a single family or a standalone house is because they don't want to deal with an HOA that can drastically go up. But again, they're still affordable when it comes to townhouses, and they are practical there. Lastly, we have apartments. How I like to describe apartments is it's the lowest amount of maintenance. You don't have any maintenance on this thing. You don't have to take care of any of the interior. And it is preferred if you want to have the maximum amount of flexibility to move out. Another thing that you want to think about when it comes to apartment, an ownership of an apartment, that is the maximum payout you do every month. Let's say your rent is $1,300. Then that's the maximum you will pay. When it comes to houses or townhouse or condos, that is the minimum you will pay. Meaning if you end up having a sewage backup, if you have a plumbing issue, if you have a water heater issue, you have an AC issue, that's coming out of your pocket. That's the cost of ownership. A lot of clients that I know or investors they want to be very savvy with their money, they will end up having ownership of properties that they rent out under a property management, but they themselves rent but they, because they want a headache-free home. They want to have a lifestyle where they're not taking care of maintenance and they are guaranteed to pay that amount every month. Primarily, a lot of crime rates are higher around apartments. It just gravitates a lower income bracket and that facilitates the crime in that region. That's all I have to say about houses, townhouses, condos, and apartments. And if you guys want any further information, please feel free to leave comments below. Follow for more content.